Greetings, greetings, family. Sister Shanice in the house. I want to rise up, rise up the entire Sister Shanice Show family. All my wonderful subscribers, I'm sending enough love, enough respect, love and light out to you. To all my patrons, woolly, woolly of love. Acha and may your pockets and bank accounts be forever full. And may finances just keep coming your way so you can forever be in a position to give to good causes. To those who share my works, thank you so, so much. To those about to subscribe to my channel, thank you and welcome on board. Today's video is about the Gambians and other West Africans who served and fought and died fighting in World War I and World War II on the side of the British, yet have been forgotten and left out of the British curriculum, airbrushed out of history. In Britain, World War I and World War II are a very important part of British life. Until this day, on an annual basis, they commemorate and they remember their boys who died in the World Wars. Wow, wow, wow. These events are so important that they're attended by the Queen herself and is enshrined in the UK national curriculum. War scenes played out in countless movies, documentaries, books, reports, etc. Nowhere when I was in school did I learn about the extent to which it was the superior fighting skills of those Africans who actually fought at the front line of World War I and II via their special Royal West African Frontier Force so successfully it was expanded for World War II and that it was those famous units that helped to win the war. In fact, it's recorded that it was their operations at the front line of the war that led to the surrender of the German forces. These brave West African soldiers even helped them to win their wars, so ought to be getting recognition until today and their descendants reparations. Or how about the gift of unlimited visas to visit the country their forefathers fought and died fighting for? Well, let's get into the history of these stories of our West African men and women who served and died in their hundreds of thousands fighting in the European World Wars. During the Second World War, some 375,000 men and women from African countries served in the Allied forces. They took part in campaigns in the Middle East, North Africa and East Africa, Italy and the Far East. Men of the 81st and 82nd West African divisions served with great distinction against the Japanese in Burma as part of the famous forgotten 14th Army. The 81st was composed of units from Gambia, Nigeria, Sierra Leone, the Gold Coast now Ghana, while the 82nd comprised of further reinforcements from Nigeria and the Gold Coast. Both divisions formed part of the RWAFF, which is the Royal West African Frontier Force. Here we have Africans in Burma filling in a huge crater in the road to facilitate the advance of the 17th Indian Division. In this picture we've got um, West Africans and uh, an Indian from the 81st West African Division taking a shower around the Caladan River in Burma in 1944. In this image we can see how young the Africans were who were taking part uh, in the world wars. This is a picture of Sergeant Levy who's a young Sierra Leonean. He looks about the age of 15 and uh, he is firing uh, a huge rifle tank during World War II in Burma. Here we have some African, West African soldiers from the 81st Division retrieving some supplies that had been dropped from the air in Burma in 1944. 
This image captures the training that the Gambians underwent in order to fight uh, in Burma. This is them training for jungle warfare and the article says reinforcements for the West African division serving overseas have to undergo a rigorous training in jungle fighting in West Africa before they are sent out to join their comrades. In battle schools sited in some of the thickest forest country in West Africa, the recruits learn how to cross swamps and rivers and other obstacles by means of ropes slung from trees or over bridges of logs or bushwood. These pictures show men of the Gambia regiment training in a battle school in the Gambia. The sergeant on the left is a typical example of the fine type of soldier that is serving in the RWAFF, sturdy, fit, highly trained, jungle obstacles present present little difficulty to him or his comrades. Hmm. Clearly indicating the superior skills of the African in terms of their ability to um, overcome any obstacles that might be put in their way. This is the fighting power of the Africans that were serving in the First and Second World War. If you were to watch the movies of the First and the Second World War, you might just get the odd glimpse of someone of colour among, you know, the, the thousands of soldiers that you will see parading in these movies. Well, the reality is, according to this picture, that only two in ten of the soldiers who fought for the British in Burma were white. With around 100 languages between them, they were led by General William Slim. Ten out of every ten soldiers, only two were white. So that means if there were 10,000 soldiers, 8,000 of them were Africans. The war in Burma was fought by mainly Africans. But this isn't what's reflected in the movies or the films or the documentaries or the images that we see in Britain. Wow, they have just been airbrushed from history. Obviously, a lot of lives were lost in the war. Here we can see the 81st Division of the RWAFF soldiers standing over Japanese uh, bodies. Uh, this was on the 19th of April 1944 in Burma during World War II. So we can see the extent of the damage that was done and the lives of the Japanese that have been taken uh, in this battle that happened on the 19th of April. Many African soldiers lost their lives and many were injured as well. They paid the terrible price of war for their input and their contribution. And the sad reality is, is that their contribution has been all but forgotten, not just in Britain, but also forgotten in their own countries. When the Gambians eventually did return home, it seems that they did uh, they were very well received, they were received like heroes and uh, the essence of the day was captured in this newspaper article dated Wednesday, February 6, 1946 when the first contingent of the Gambian troops arrived back in the Gambia. It says, after two and three quarter years absence from colony on active service with the WAEF in Burma, the 1st Battalion, the Gambian Regiment landed at Admiralty Wharf, Bathurst, Gambia on the 8th of January 1946 from troop ship Empire Pride. The streets were gaily decorated with flags and welcome home messages and cheering Gambians lined the route as the battalion headed by the battalion band under band Sergeant Borge, Bedou of Bedou Village, Sierra Leone marched along Wellington Street to McCarthy Square. The Governor of the Gambia, His Excellency Sir Hilary Blood, KCMG LLD took the salute as the battalion marched past the square to the strains of the regimental march Old Calabar. 
also present at the march passed his excellency's wife lady blood and miss allison blood <laughs> The turnout was worthy of the fine fighting record of the battalion and the spectators cheered as the African soldiers marched past the rostrum. His Excellency addressed the troops at Box Bar Bathurst and said that they had played a magnificent part in defending the British Empire against Japanese aggression. The whole ceremony was carried out with pride and dignity. Europeans and Africans alike were impressed by the solidarity or the soldiery, bearing and discipline of the men as they stepped uh, ashore and marched through the town. After the march passed the uh, after the march passed and addressed by His Excellency, the Governor, the Battalion under their Commanding Officer, Lieutenant Colonel J.A.J. Red, DSOMC, uh, embossed uh, for the, uh, the Demo Battalion Centre in Brikama. This was one of the most memorable days in the history of the Gambia and a fitting tribute to her gallant sons. What a pity they're no longer remembered today. Let's take a look at the numbers of uh, the soldiers that actually made it back, back home. This article says, bringing home the WAEF. General Headquarters West African Command announced in January that there were 65,443 West African other ranks serving overseas with West African Expeditionary Force. This total was made up as follows. Nigeria, 36,757. Gold Coast, 24,921. Sierra Leone, 3,110. The Gambia, 655. Oh my gosh, what happened to all of those Gambians that went out to fight? Only 655, you know, to be repatriated home. Wow. Starting in January, it was hoped to bring these troops home at the rate of about 8,000 a month. In the Middle East, where there were about 20,000, the Middle East, mind you, is North Africa, where there were about 20,000 West African troops, the vast majority of them Nigerians, some 16,000 had almost completed three years service uh, in that theater. Some 1,500, the first Nigerian units to be repatriated from the Middle East, were expected to arrive at Lagos in the troop ship Highland Princess towards the end of January. It was anticipated that further shipments of West African troops repatriated from the Middle East would be therefore after arriving regularly. Well, let's hope so. Let's hope that uh, they weren't left out there to perish after fighting uh, for the British. Here we have a Gambian soldier, Kindi Kamara, who excelled during World War II. He fought against the Japanese in the jungle of Burma and won accolades and decorations for his bravery. He never wavered and always kept the flag high. He helped in the defeat of the Nazi and saved the world from tyranny and destruction from the Nazi and the fascists. How often do we get credit for that? Not often enough, but today on the Sister Shanice Show, we are giving credit and recognition to these soldiers, these brave, gallant soldiers who foolishly fought in a war that wasn't their own. We have uh, the image here of a brave soldier who was awarded for gallantry to the Gambian soldiers. And uh, he was granted along, well, there was a total of three members of the 1st Regiment who were granted awards for gallantry in service. And, you know, they must have been exceptional in the work that they did to be decorated uh, at that level. So they all got military uh, medals for their role in the wars. In this picture we can see 
a number of World War II soldiers. This picture was taken in 1943 in Baku and these soldiers uh, were on their way out to fight the war and this picture was taken just before they left for the front wow abroad the moon munch in 1943 these brave brave gambians were going to be put on the front line of the war there is a war cemetery at fajara which is dedicated to those who fought in the war take a look Okay, so as I'm here, I thought I would just go into the Fajara War Cemetery and uh, take a look at this uh, particular memorial site that's here uh, at Traffic Lights in the Gambia. As you can see, it is uh, the cemetery was built and it's been maintained by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. And uh, if we look at this plaque over here, uh, the information's fading quite a bit, but you can see that uh, basically those who died and were buried here were involved in the uh, two world wars. And uh, let's have a look. This cemetery actually contains 203 burials uh, of the Second World War, and uh, by forces. They comprise of 122 West Africans, 63 British, 10 Canadian, 2 Australians, 2 New Zealanders, 1 Rhodesian, 2 French and 1 Norwegian. So this is uh, the Gambia Memorial for uh, those who, who died. And uh, basically uh, during the First World War, uh, there were Gambian, Ghanaian, Nigerian, Sierra Leoneans. You know, they were raised amongst local people. And the Ghanaian and the Nigerian, they had artillery batteries, whilst their individual uh, identities and recruitment uh, areas. It's saying, um, I can get that on my way. The recruitment areas were preserved. Uh, the, the four formations were for the command and administrative purposes grouped together in what was to become the Royal West African Frontier uh, Force and uh, that was a title that was made famous in the two world wars and uh, it says that units of the Royal West African Frontier Force also served uh, in operations in August 1914 which led to the surrender of the German forces uh, in the Second World War as well, West African frontier uh, was expanded to many times uh, its peacetime strength. So lots of uh, involvement of West Africa in the British, well, in the European World Wars. Let's go and have a look at the uh, Memorial Cemetery. So we're just going through the arch here, uh, well maintained, nicely painted. And uh, on the wall here, you've got the names of the Gambian regiments and you've also got the names of the West African uh, regiment members as well, just a few of them. And it says that uh, the soldiers and airmen whose memory is honoured here died in the service of their country and lie buried elsewhere in West Africa uh, as well. So on this side, uh, you've got the cemeteries of those who were Muslim and on this side you've got the uh, burial of those who were Christians so sadly although they fought together I'm sure side by side on the battlefield you know they're very much separated in death Muslims on one side Christians on the other but in the center that of a cross.